We had an incredible meetup today. Uh, was there any standout moments to kind of summarize the meetup today? Sticking at it long enough within boundaries. So a lot of people, they've, they've been students for a while, but they've, uh, they've gained experience incorrectly, right? So what they've done is they've done the processes and et cetera. They've done it the normal way, but they've not, they've not been creative with it. They've not actually looked at themselves and thinking, they've not centered the, the focal point towards them. So what's, what's happened is they do the forecast and all that kind of stuff. And then two years later, they're in the same position because they've not actually taken proper action with it. So as I was saying to the guys today is when you've got like a plan to operate by, a simple trading plan, and you make mistakes in the confines of a trading plan as an example, you're failing forwards, right? And so what happens is they can actually learn and they can build refinements off of something substantial. As it's not, it's not, it's not there, they've not got any sort of boundaries to operate by. What's going on guys? So back with another episode on the Inside the Mind podcast. I am here with the man himself, Mr. Ibi Anzari. This is gonna be an epic podcast. I think it's shadow boxing over there somewhere. It is gonna be an epic podcast. We're gonna be talking about a lot of important things. We actually had an official meetup. Well, a localized meetup here at Falcon today. It was awesome to meet so many people. We're gonna be talking about all those things and important tips in trading to make sure you're scaling up, you're developing the right mentality to succeed with your trading goals. It's gonna be super fun and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome back to another episode on the Inside the Mind podcast. Joined with me, the man himself, Mr. Ibi Anzari. We had an incredible meetup today, so I'm gonna start it right there. We're gonna dive straight in. We had a localized meetup with a lot of people from the Falcon community. It was awesome. Many people we saw there for the very first time. Ibi, how did you find it? Amazing. It was the uh, first one after two years, I think. It's crazy, isn't it? So, two years. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. Very, very long time. So new faces. People we've not seen before with Zoom and that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit surreal actually to see them in person. It's not the same thing though, is it? No. Compared to Zoom, compared to in person. Yeah. Uh, was there any standout moments to kind of summarize the meetup today? Um, to be honest, it was uh, is the conviction people had in person compared to online. It's, it's a different energy when you feel it in real life. Um, you can tell that they're dead, they're dead, they're dead committed. Mm -hmm. And the point you get across to them is a lot easier as well as opposed to over the, over the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just the energy. We didn't even realize we were in a Starbucks at one point. It just, it just felt like you're at home. Exactly, and yeah. I think that is the beautiful thing yeah. when we're all like, I mean, we went into some deep conversations. We'll probably talk about that in the podcast today, yeah. which is you know, making sure that you're on the same wavelength. Like mm -hmm. one of the things just sticks out straight away. So we was talking to everybody about, I'm sure you've all felt this before, where you just come into a room and if someone's had an argument, for example, you feel the tension in the room, don't you? Yeah. Which is energy, frequency. These things do actually matter, which is the power of inner circle. Yeah. Like coming to a meetup like this might seem like, well, what's that gonna do? Actually yeah. does quite a lot because yeah. you see people working harder than you, maybe more resourceful. You go back with the fire yeah. inside of you to then actually go back even harder than poor. Was there any yeah. kind of standout conversations for you or what you just observed overall? Because I mean, you're coaching people one-to-one -one as well. Yeah. People are a lot more uh, open in person, funnily enough, mm. as opposed to over the phone. I don't know why, but you can uh, you can you can sense their body language a lot better. So you can mm. you can tell there's an underlying issue when you start talking to people. They open up a little bit more. I think that trust aspect is key as well, because because you're face to face, they don't hold back. There's no there's no filter kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, that that was surprised actually the amount of conversations we had of people who've actually passed the the fund and just, just trading days. I, I didn't even know. They've kept it quiet until they, they told you in person. But that's what I love about that. So we're nearly about 30, which is awesome. Yeah. Right, and it might seem like, oh, 30, it's, it's, a, it's a big enough number than you think because of the way everything is set up. Yeah. And what's beautiful about this is that I've spoken to a lot of these people, we speak to them in the live sessions as well, yeah. is that they're in a position in which that they're not trying to force it now. So even though they've got their trading days, yeah. everything that myself, yourself, Abdu has been talking about for a very long period of time is sinking in. Yeah. And that is the difference of what I'd noticed, because I'm thinking about what you said, a couple of years since the last one, mm -hmm. different people, different faces, yeah. people uh, that stayed, people that didn't, people are committed, people that throw in the towel when things get difficult. Yeah. The reality is trading is not so much about system or strategy, uh, finding the holy grail, which people are still searching for, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's just about sticking, sticking to it, yeah. showing up every day. 90% of becoming successful, as you know, in trading, it's just about showing up long enough. Yeah. That's a, that's a big conversation we had today, actually, which was uh, sticking at it long enough within boundaries. Mm. So a lot of people, they've, they've been students for a while, but they've, uh, they've gained experience incorrectly, mm. right? So what they've done is they've 
done the processes and etc they've done it the normal way but they've not they've not been creative with it they've not actually looked at themselves and thinking they've not centered the, the focal point towards them so what's what's happened is they do the forecast and all that kind of stuff and then two years later they're in the same position because they've not mm. actually taken proper action with it so as i was saying to the guys today is when you've got like a plan to operate by a simple trading plan and you make mistakes in the confines of a trading plan as an example you're failing forwards mm. right and so what happens is they can actually learn and they can build refinements off of something substantial as it's not, it's not, it's not there they've not got any sort of boundaries to operate by uh, and that was a big conversation so they understood that a lot better now because fast forward two years ago they didn't understand the importance of these things so boundaries was it was a big thing and if they can fail and operate within boundaries uh, they'll find four years later the experience that they've gained is actually it's proper experience it's mm. not just half-hearted experience you know well there you go and it's it's really about having the self-awareness to recognize where you're at yeah because we we spoke a lot about ego today as well which was interesting yeah because the, the reality is it just doesn't serve you in trading and, and most traders do have it this industry most traders in this industry have it yeah. not realizing that what it tells me straight away when i see someone with massive ego in trading is that you're blindsided most of the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it from a market perspective, if you're someone who's got quite a big ego, that shows me that you have an increased probability of being blindsided by the market. Yeah. Because it means that you probably marry a bias more than you think, yeah. stuck in your ways, and you have an idea about the market and you fixate on it because your ego is gonna come in and go, no, you're correct. Mm -hmm versus actually looking at it holistically yeah. and seeing what the market is doing. What was really interesting about speaking to the guys and girls today was the, I would say the emotional maturity of mm -hmm. like now because they're, they're up, some of these people up 10, 15%, 20%, 36% yeah. on some of them, that they don't feel the need to now just jump back into the market. Yeah. Now imagine what the amateur trader do, what would they do after a win like that? Yeah. Get involved in what, three or four reckless trades? Yet they didn't, yeah. not recognizing how incredible that is. What's the statistic again? Was it like my, the average trader down minus? Minus 14%. It's crazy. A month on average. That, that, when I was having a conversation with Steve, the guy I was speaking to, for those that don't know, this guy's got like a 50% partnership in like a hedge fund or something. He's, he's out there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people come over to him to, to manage his capital and he was saying on the phone, he goes, he puts the phone down within 30 seconds on almost all of them because first question he asks is what's your peak drawdown like on a month to month? 14, 15, 16, 17 percent is the average. Mm -hmm. So when I told him that my, my drawdown was around three and a half percent, three three to five percent, sorry. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it just, it wasn't real to him, you know? And that's shocking. I think a lot of what you mentioned there is, is down to the guidance as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because we, we, we spoke about this when people made their first big profits after a while, because things have start, finally started to sink in, the first thing we did was think we need to get on a call with all these guys, especially the funded students, exactly. and rein them in and mm -hmm. calm them down because what happens with traders, they get too happy. Yep. And that guidance is I don't see anywhere else because nowhere do you see people talking about dealing with winners. Mm -hmm. It's all about the same old typical stuff, dealing with losers, far more greed. It's just reception level stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real basic but stuff. It's so bespoke here. Mm -hmm. And people are missing out on that part. 100%. And the reality is, right, you cannot instill a quality into somebody that you, do pos that you don't possess yourself. Yeah. Right, so if your experience level has only ever been, been funded by uh, a prop firm, yeah. and now you're teaching someone, cold hard truth is, you just not experienced it. Yeah. You know what it's like to deal with investor capital. You haven't got that pressure or dealt with that stress before. Yeah. You've not gone through it, so you can't actually help someone get to the levels yeah right and, and that's the part that i think people disregard and miss out they infatuate over passing an assessment we always say this to the falcon guys as well stop yeah. infatuate over the funded program that we have mm -hmm. stop infatuating over that stop putting it on a pedestal you need to develop the skill set to be able to trade the financial markets in the first place yeah you need to develop the traits for example people are so fixated on asking what you've heard it loads of times what's the top three tips what's the top tip to make you a successful trader yeah versus asking what are the key traits and characteristics of successful traders trading seven plus figures? Mm -hmm. It's a better question to ask, isn't yeah. it? All right, so what do they all have in common? Okay, so they're all deci decisive, they're all organized, mm -hmm. they're very structured, they're good at following rules, yeah. right? They're planned. Ask yourself, do you have those traits? Yeah. Where do you lack? Consistency is within yourself. Yeah. And I think that's where people get it confused is they don't realize that they are a reflection, right? The reflection yeah. of their results is a reflection of who they are in the markets. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for consistency yet, you've got no consistency in your life whatsoever. How do you think you're going to get it from the markets yeah. where there is huge consequences? Yeah. It's insane, it baffles me. It's still. more funny how you've been saying that for the past five years and only now people are starting to understand the message. So a lot of it comes down to um, 
some people have to just go get burnt by the flame of course. multiple times to actually realize the importance of certain things. Like how many times have you given someone advice and they've completely gone against it and they hear it somewhere else and in a new, t in a new tone, new environment mm -hmm. and they think, oh, I've never heard this before, this is fantastic. Yet you've been drilling the same message into them over and over again. You know, so that's the, that's the message I was talking about today to the guys at the meetup is that if we say something, like it comes from a point of experience, never once would you advise anyone on something they've not done before. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And that, that's the most detrimental thing. And that, that's what you see the industry today built up on, people not practicing what they're preaching. Mm -hmm. And that's a big issue, a big, big issue. So having that diversification in, in Falcon where people have got people from different experience levels, like you're good at your own things, you've got your own strengths, I'm good at my own things, mm -hmm. Abdul's got, got his own things as well. People can use that diversification in a very positive manner. Yeah, and it's no coincidence that the results are now yeah. improving because of that. That's what I mean. Because there's a clear, consistent message across the board. Yeah. And I think that's so, so important. This is why, you know, every five to six weeks, I'm going to be doing those local ones. I know you're going to be hosting some local ones as well yeah. um, in your area, Manchester. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the important thing from an accountability point of view. Because mm -hmm. I love that. This is what we live and breathe. Yeah. That's why I started this project in the first place. Because it's different, right? We've built so many connections today of people that I generally felt like I've known for years. Yeah. It was almost strange because you, you see them online, etc., and you see them in person. It, it didn't really feel like a first time meet. Yeah. It just felt like now you've seen the physical person versus uh, who you've actually met. At online and it's just so good to see the commitment it's, yeah. there's no if buts or maybes or yeah I'm involved in this training thing and see how it goes it's very direct as yeah. to, this is where I'm at this is where I'm going because these are the people that are paying attention mm -hmm. and that is the difference if most people just paid attention versus trying to go well this is what I'm going to do well you don't know the answer you're not there yet so yeah. just listen to who's in front of you yeah. I'm so grateful that my mentors early on would teach me these valuable things yeah just asking good questions yeah Speaking of good questions, are there any good questions that you would suggest anyone listening to ask on a consistent basis? Do you know what? They've got to be practical, in my opinion, mm -hmm. questions, because a lot of people have wishy-washy questions they ask themselves. And I never say in coaching calls, as an example, yeah, one day you're going to make it and all that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't help anyone practically. And I think people need to ask questions from a practical standpoint. So, for example, when you finish off the week, or you know, I say you're not doing well, as a, as a clear example. Many people don't do well in trading anyway, right? It's a common, common issue. Just assess the situation logically, look at it holistically and think, right, why am I not doing well? You mentioned it before, write down all your strong points and your weak points. It's so simple. It takes time, but something as simple as that gives you practical information about yourself. Mm -hmm. So that will get you asking questions about yourself. Instead of people trying to figure out what can I ask myself, they can actually see, right, this is where I'm at, strong points, weak points. Where can I fix up and how can I fix up? And a lot of people, if they just pay attention to that, they can actually figure out a lot more solutions to their problems instead of they have a little bit of friction and they go off asking for help. Right, that actually does more detriment to their success. Exactly. Unless they try to figure it out themselves. You just reminded me of something as well, the triangle, right? Yeah, the yeah. trading triangle, which is so important. And, and I think this is someone, anyone listening right now, it does not matter how you're trading to think about it. Think about the trading triangle where it's got your trading plan, right? You've got your system and you've of course got your psychology. Most people, they're missing parts. Big mm -hmm. ones, probably psychology, as you can imagine. Yeah. Right, so they've, they've got these things in there. But also people don't realize that they don't know their system as well as what they think. So you imagine those three points. So let's take your system, for example. You rate it out of 10. So you, you, can be, you have to be brutally honest. It's the only way this works. You can say, how well do I know this? How well do I really know this? You might know it's 7 out of 10. Yeah. So you know your, your system 7 out of 10. So you don't know it like the back of your hand. You're not unconsciously competent, yet you're expecting results from the market. And then secondary, your trading plan. Your, your trading plan is wishy-washy. It's not black and white. It's 10 pages long. It's not specific. And you don't know what you're doing. And then your psychology, which is probably a two out of 10, and yet these people have the audacity to want results from the market, yeah. and then they're blaming them. Yeah. Then the finger pointing happens. Yeah. But they don't have the self-awareness to take a step back and take ownership over, mm -hmm. do you know what? I just don't know enough yet. And that's okay yeah. when you can have the self-awareness to go, this is where I'm at, now I move forward. How on earth can you assess yourself so early on, only knowing, let's say, 40% of what you need to know? Yeah. Of course you're not gonna succeed, you're too early on. And this infatuation of, wanting something so bad, I think actually consumes people and they don't get that part. What's your kind of view on that where someone is almost too passionate, yeah. where they become desperate? Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, it has to be tamed. Otherwise mm. it can work against you. I've like worked with a couple of guys recently, they're, they're very passionate, but it's, it's become a poison to them. And they don't realize it. They're so consumed by passion that it actually blinds them from making logical decisions about their trading. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. A lot of people out there are like that. Nothing wrong with passion, but if it's, if it's left untamed and uncontrolled, it will literally kill you. Right, I had the same thing, you give me advice in the past, and honestly, I pushed it aside and I got burnt. Mm -hmm. Seriously, and I'm saying that openly to everyone listening. And uh, some people have to learn that way though. 
that's the thing some people have to learn that way and sometimes it's the best way for people to learn because mm -hmm. they won't have that void and thinking oh you know i could have tried it this way or that way when they try it and they get burnt by it mm -hmm. and they're surrounded by strong level-headed people they can say look i told you so mm -hmm. and only few people can take that criticism positively instead of it as an insult exactly and criticism to take it right and to absorb it and to do something from it is a big part of it many people can't take criticism that's the issue mm -hmm. if they could take criticism constructive criticism without getting offended and they could do something from that and just get on with it stick it out seriously there'd be a lot more people wouldn't exactly it? and it's the toughness as well just yeah. to listen right we can in a very very small conversation figure out where someone is at and it's as direct can you take you don't work hard enough you just don't give a fuck essentially about what you're doing. You think you do, but you don't really mm. care as much as what you are. It's convenient for you. The yeah. big difference between uh, being committed and having something that's convenient. If someone's really interested in something, you could say I'm very interested in trading and that could almost delude you to thinking that you're committed. Yeah. Cause you know, no, I'm really interested, I do all this work. What happens when there's an event? What happens when there's a party? What happens when there's this? Yeah. Do you put it to one side? Wh which one do you prioritize? Yeah. And you'll find the ones that prioritize other things around their trading, mm -hmm. they're just very interested. And I think that's a dangerous line yeah. because when you're committed, you'll do something when it's inconvenient. Mm -hmm. And when you're interested, yeah. you'll do it when it's convenient. Yeah. And you'll find the difference between someone who's just interested in something versus committed, yeah. completely different level of results. Yeah. And I think that holds so many traders back. They're not all in. Yeah. Honestly, from what I've observed, and I'm sure you have as well over the past five plus years, they're just not all in. And yeah. you kid yourselves. So many of you kid yourselves thinking that you are. Yeah. Right? And I've met people who are all in. There's a big, big difference between the level of commitment, their focus, they pay attention, they do the right things. They actually listen, right? Yeah. As you've said many of times, right? Two ears, one mouth. Yeah. Right? That's something that uh, you found really easy to do, right? Where did you kind of learn that sort of philosophy to just observe and actually listen? My dad. Really? Dad, if you're watching this, thank you. <laughs> no, <laughs> Big shout out to the man. I, I used to get, um, used to shout. If I, didn't, if I didn't listen and I asked silly questions, mm -hmm. it was a side effect of me not listening well. Right. So I learned that at a young age, but that's the thing that people are missing out on a lot. They don't think about what they're gonna ask before they ask it. And like you said, they're committed guys, people are all in. Funnily enough, they have brilliant questions to ask because they think, well, first of all, has this question been asked before? Many times it has. And the guys that are committed, they'd have heard you answer that question multiple times. So there's no need for me to answer that question. I look like a fool, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't agree with the whole no question is a silly question kind of thing. You have to think about it. Of course. You know, if you're brand new, it's different because you know, you know nothing at that stage. But most people have had their questions answered so many times. And if they just take a step back and think, instead of me trying to fit in, acting like a great student, I'll be a better student if I just sit and sometimes just don't say anything. I mm -hmm. just listen and observe and ask the question at the right times. Sometimes, like you said, they've just got to stick it out long enough where they come to realize a lot of the trading work that they thought, you know, I've got to do X, Y, and Z every single day, six, seven, eight hours of work. It's actually a lot less than that. You know, there's times where you've got to do a lot of work. I get that. You're testing or whatever it might be. But when it comes down to it, it's such a small portion of your day. Mm -hmm. But people don't like that because they want to feel adequate to themselves. Exactly. And so to fill that sense of adequacy, they try and come up with questions to, to validate the adequacy and they ask questions that have been answered. And so it's the same cycle and never improve. Mm -hmm. But if you fast forward six to 12 months later, you'll find a lot of the trading work, like I mentioned, is so minimal, mm -hmm. so minimal. And people could actually see that, not in, from a negative standpoint, but trading is boring. It's not supposed to be exciting. The exciting part is the analysis on the weekends, all kinds of stuff, the processes. But a lot of your day is spent in your life, not trading. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be your life revolves around trading. Trading should revolve around your life in a sense, right? Exactly. Um, and if more people could understand that, they would stop taking trading, putting trading on this pedestal where it's like, they're gonna be on the charts all the time doing this, this and this. A lot of trading is actually not trading and just enjoying your life. And people spend years being so miserable, stuck in this like paradigm of the future that's not even existed yet, mm -hmm. it's not even happened yet. And then they, they're not, they, they're forgetting the here and now. Exactly, because they think, well, if I just do 12 hours a day, yeah it's gonna get me there quicker. Not necessarily, because what about your emotional maturity? Yeah. Right, it's just, again, there's so much information that you're blueprinting from the market. It is virtually impossible in that short period of time, no matter yeah. what hours you do. If that was the case, if it meant more hours, quicker success, that would be the same logic as more trades equals more profit. Yeah. We know that doesn't exist. So it's really about understanding that you going all in doesn't mean 20 hours a day, yeah. right? It doesn't mean that. It means prioritize your trading. Yeah. Two things right now that every big trader could do that needs to be doing if you're actually serious about accomplishing your trading goals, which is have a solid morning and evening routine. Mm -hmm. You'll be baffled how many people do not have this. Yeah. That morning routine, it's just like I just look at the charts. Already, I know that you're failing 
like just from yeah. that because the margin for error must be so high you're not in the right state of mind yeah. you've got no kind of pre-ritual leading up to the chart so you don't even know how to get yourself mentally prepared to make good trading decisions what's the chances you go on crazy losing streaks yeah probably quite high look at the statistics of funding firms yeah. even people that are getting big payouts they lose their account in three weeks yeah you can tell they're psychologically not trained i know well it's funny you mentioned that because today we were, we were talking about this at the end of the meetup where um it's a male predominated industry right trading of course, of course women that trade as well but some great is, women traders so in the community I know, as well exactly right um but generally, to, this is towards men, I'm, I'm speaking, right? Where we, we're like, naturally, it's in our DNA to goal achieve. As alphas, we want to go out and get things and, and like, we basically provide, providers and protectors, so to speak. So that's hardwired into our DNA. So that's why I find that men find this part harder than women do. Um, in that, like, daily goals, as an example, I'll link it. When, when you're achieving and taking things off, and mm -hmm. people think this is just something little, it's not, I'll tell you why. If you're taking things off, it's sort of fulfilling that DNA within you. Right, that you're actually making something happen because a lot of trading, a lot of the portion of your journey, you're not making any money. And so that, as, as men, as, as like I said, that we attach our dignity to money, in a sense, uh, which I don't think is right, but it's just natural. And so when we're not making money, we feel emasculated in a way. Mm -hmm. And that, that creates self-sabotage and so many psychological issues that people need to fix, but they don't fix. And then those underlying issues, when left untreated, come back to bite them two years later. But little things like daily goals, it keeps people in check. Mm -hmm. Like people still ask me if I do daily goals, why would I not? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's been, I don't, I don't care. I know there's no chip on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's what got me here. I need to continue doing that. Exactly. Why would I stop doing that? It's silly because that keeps you in a mindset of I'm achieving something in a day. It fulfills that DNA aspect of, of, your, of your manhood, so to speak. I've spoken to a couple of girls in the community and uh, they, don't, they don't like, of course they're goal achievers and they're mm -hmm. driven, goal driven, but it's not to the same degree as a, as, as a guy would like. Mm. They, like they, they sort of judge their identity over it kind of thing. Of course, yeah. Like a, a women naturally more relaxed in that sense. There's a lot of self-image issues in this industry. Yeah. Because most people don't feel confident within themselves. Yeah. They're not actually truly confident in their own skin. Yeah. And they're searching for validation on social media. Yeah. They're not around the right people. That is the cult of truth. They do not listen to the right people. Yeah. Which is why I'm so glad that we've cultivated such an incredible community mm -hmm. of savage mindsets. Yeah. So you know I'm looking forward to the most, right? The people that are stuck at it and are constantly moving forward, right? We're already seeing the, the numbers increase, which is so important, right, yeah. for their growth. But it's very deliberate as well, right? It's very deliberate, the growth that they're getting. Then you, of course, got the refinement that have been tested for a year and a half that's going to be rolled out soon. So for those of you that don't know, I've been working on something for the past year and a half, and this is essentially a refinement to the Falcon strategy, which is just, in my opinion, phenomenal. Think about the guys and girls that have very limited understanding on this already, yeah. are already smashing it. I, I cannot wait to see what they do yeah. for yourself, right? You've already increased massively just by this tiny little tweak. Yeah. It's just so good to see yeah. that with everything that we have. Because listen, the reality is this. If you're a trader and you want a place, a home where people are gonna have your back, you've got the support, you have everything in place, you've got the psychology, you've got the trading system, you've got a proven edge, and you can get funded and you've got something in-house that's gonna help you get to that next level, you have everything there, right? And that's the most important thing, having people that have your back, yeah. where most of the time the industry or even your close friends sometimes don't really know how to have your back in a way that is gonna serve for your longer term goals. Yeah. I've got a very strong prediction of where we're going to be by the end of this year, just from the numbers we're seeing, the amount of people have already passed the assessment already. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. All of the vision, the virtual trading floor, every single thing. The funny thing is, right, and people try and hold you too much to these timelines, again, because they're obsessed mm -hmm. over these timelines. They were asked a couple of years ago, you know, when's this going to happen? When's the fun? People just use this as excuses yeah. from a weak mindset. Every single thing that Falcon has set out has done. It's happened. Every single thing has happened. Yeah. And every single else that I've uttered and said will happen yeah. because it's always coming to fruition, it always will. Yeah. The reality is people just need to look at what's in front of them, yeah. right? Become more resourceful. But I'm looking forward to, to the end of the year. Of course, we're gonna have Dubai meetups, yeah. funded meetups. Oh, it's just gonna be so good. I cannot wait for the impact. It honestly gives me goosebumps even thinking about it. And it's yeah. not just because it's freezing out here, by the way. It's, um, it's uh, so, so enjoyable. We was talking about it today as well. Yeah. It, do you know what was really good? Because a lot of the people that are, are funded, of course, in at the meetup today, which was cool to see, and in the live sessions was, their detail as to what they're going to do after it. Because most people, again, like you said, very basic FOMO, yeah. how to deal with losses, all of that type of stuff. Yeah, it's all well and good, but how do you deal with winners? Yeah. How do you not go on a massive losing streak after feeling euphoric yeah. after banking your first 10K trade? Yeah. How do you deal with that? Yeah. You know, what are you going to do once you've got a consistent cash flow? What are you going to do after? Mm -hmm. 
are you going to invest the money? Yeah. Most people haven't got a clue. They've yeah. not got their life figured out. And the reality is, until you become, remember, success is not something that you pursue. Jim Rohn famously said, success is something that you attract by the person you become. Yeah. So who are you actually becoming? And most yeah. traders are not asking that. They're like, where's that strategy? How can I make 10%? Yeah. You know? But we mentioned there what they become is a side effect of the environment. They're exactly. around the wrong people. Then, um, then it's a recipe for disaster, essentially. Like you mentioned, that first 10K trade that they make, they'll have all these ideas, oh, I'm going to do this, this, and this, but when they actually make that money, it, all that humility gets thrown out the window now. Exactly. So to have people in the circle that knock them in check and say, listen, they know they're not going to spend that money on something stupid because their circle's going to going to dissimulate them. 100%, know, 100%. For any traders out there right now, whether they be uh, new, intermediate, advanced, yeah. what would you say is one of the key things that you feel has really helped you on your journey? It could be one thing, two yeah. things. It could be anything that you think that has really resonated with you, with yeah. you that's helped assist you in your journey uh, and things. what they could do practically. Two things, resourcefulness and logic. Combine mm -hmm. them both things and I swear to God you got a winning recipe. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't believe everyone's born resourceful or logical. You think it's a taught thing? It's right? a taught thing, exactly, by environment. And um, a lot of it's through the upbringing as well, but you, you don't have to be, in, it's not a natural innate ability for some people. You can cultivate that by being around the right people. Logically for me, it was like, I don't want to listen to a hundred people at once. I'm going to listen to one person, mm. and that was you. So I listened, I listened. Every week I'd keep it simple. Okay, first thing I need to do before anything is I need to iron up my technical analysis. Week on week correlation. Didn't over question it, I didn't over analyze, oh, why has he got his lines like this or lines like that? It was simple. I was like, okay, use common sense here. Get your analysis as close as possible. Over time that improved. Next thing I was like, okay, I need to, I need to get myself psychologically intact. How do I do this? Right, so I worked on that. Then you brought out Rewired. Obviously, mm -hmm. it wasn't out at that time, but of course. if it was, I would have, trust me, I would <laughs> thank myself. Um, so then I started working on that, and then I realized the importance of these things throughout time, through highs and lows, that actually, hold on, I know my system really well. I need to fix myself mentally, how do I do that? So I started conversing with you more. I started listening to you more, right? So instead of like um, take, going through the Sunday market break breakdown and taking notes on TAs, I would listen right, mm -hmm. to your thought processes, and I'll try and emulate that. I'll try and dissect why is he thinking this way, mm -hmm. right? I wouldn't overanalyze it, I'll try to dissect it. And that I naturally brought into my own, my own trading, my own persona. And that's when I realized how many things I've been overlooking and how many other traders may be overlooking that. So resourcefulness is a big, big part of it. Um, there's traders that I'm sure you've coached as well, I've co I coached recently, that the, the foundation is so simple for them. All they have to do is stick it out. And two weeks later, they're like, look, uh, I'm not getting it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're not even stuck it out long enough yet. Exactly, two weeks is nothing. Stick it out, be resourceful. Look at what you've got and how you can use it at what time. It's overwhelming because we've got a lot of stuff to offer students. But if they utilize it at the right time, so it's a timing industry, right? You time your trades, you've got a time when you learn certain things, mm -hmm. that things will just start to fall into place. And use logic as well. Mm -hmm. Like if you see people that are doing better than you, so to speak, and different, different traders in different environments, don't sit and think, oh, I'm not doing well, and they are. Because there'll come a time where you're doing well and they're not. And it's a cycle that people get exactly. caught up into over analysis. So um, drown out that noise, be logical with your approach, and also be as resourceful as possible with what you've got. Like we've got everything unlocked, this is what I was saying. We've got the psychological aspect unlocked, mm -hmm. we've got in-house funding, we're not even affiliated with any funders or anything mm -hmm. like that, which would have been the easy route out, but there's no insurance with that. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned, if someone gets up to 320K and they bottle it the next day out of a bad losing streak, you can just give them that back. Yeah. Because that trust is there, you've not got that anywhere else. Exactly, it's bespoke, right? we've got them covered. Yeah. This is a huge part as well, a very, very huge part. Yeah. And this is what, I mean, great tips by the way. So yeah. honestly, big shout out for all the gems and knowledge that you've done for the community since you've, you've joined and how much your growth, you've influenced so many people. And I'm generally so, so excited yeah. for, for the future. So no, Thank thanks you. for jumping on the podcast. It's been a very successful day today yeah. and I'm honestly still fired up. Thank you so much for listening and tuning into this Inside the Mind podcast. Let us know your number one takeaways and use these important details. If you've really paid attention, then you'll take away these practical steps, apply it in your trading and scale up. It's a tough industry out there, but if you have the right mentality and you show up, that is 90% of the battle. Have an incredible day, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next episode on the Inside the Mind podcast.